Hey folks, in this video, I'll talk about Sprinkle from Critical Role. So if you don't know who Sprinkle is, I don't really know why you clicked on this video, but welcome to our channel. Um, Sprinkle is the pet of Jester Lavore, played by Laura Bailey in Critical Role. It's an NPC pet. It's not a familiar. It's not an animal companion. Uh, it is its own little thing, its own little pet, uh, played by Matt Mercer, as well as sometimes played by some of the other players in pretty hilarious ways throughout the campaign. I love Sprinkle. I think Sprinkle is awesome. It's a great inclusion. It makes for some really fun in-character moments as well as some pretty hilarious meta moments between the cast, the players of Critical Role. Um, and I think that there are some reasons why Sprinkle works so well. Maybe the easiest reason is because this is a group of people who really are friends. They've been playing together for years. They get each other's sense of humor. And they're professional actors who have a decent amount of improv training. Uh, so that's all you need in order to be able to NPC really well a pet. Get a group, play with them for almost a decade, and have professional acting training. If you liked this video... Okay, no, I'm, I'm, I'm joking. Um, there are some things that I think that makes sprinkle work really well as a pet. Again, not an animal companion, but as a pet. One of the things that I liked is that like very early on, there were checks. There were animal handling checks to see how well Jester was um, handling Sprinkle, how well they were getting along, how, uh, how well she was taking care of Sprinkle. And Matt did a really nice job of having those checks and those roles show up from time to time to help guide the narrative. But then he also had moments where, you know, Laura just said, well, this is what I want to do. And Matt said, okay, you spend a couple of days working on that. Uh, specifically earlier on after purchasing Sprinkle, um, which was in and of itself a really great, very silly moment. Uh, Jester and Bo along with the rest of the group, find this traveling merchant and buy a bunch of pets. So it is 70 gold. Yeah, 70 gold. going to make a giant alligator so happy. Can, we, get a, can we start all? a pool about which animal dies first? Weasel. Or lost. Just lost. Weasel. Weasel. Okay. So, this is my, in my daughter's campaign of eight-year-olds. Oh. All the girls are like, can I have a pet? It's just like that. Yeah. These two. Yeah. You yeah. did this. Yeah. You did this. Yeah, I did. All right, so Jester has a crimson weasel. Oh, I have a weasel. You can see everybody is kind of like, oh my god, this is a horrible choice. Um, and maybe it was, but it was also really fun. And they end up with these pets that they're going to have to take care of and care for, like I was saying. And based on the results of those animal handling checks, you kind of get a good feel for how well the pet responds to the owner, how much it likes the owner, how much the pet is going to be um, learning tricks and things like that. And I think that that's a really good idea to incorporate, as well as simply saying, okay, that's what you want to try to do, spend a couple of days doing it. Notably, um, Jester was trying to teach Sprinkle how to fetch, like how to go pick up little baubles and things like that. I want Sprinkle to be able to get their button and bring it back to me. Okay, go make an animal handling check for me. Twenty. Twenty, okay. Um, Sprinkle's still a little skittish after some of the experiences on the seas, but seems to have gotten a little more comfortable. I know. And thankfully there isn't a lot of uh, chaos since you guys left the archipelago. Uh, but over the next few days, Sprinkle seems to take to it um, for the button and the, the bits of food and treats that you uh, provide. So you seem to have taught a simple trick to your weasel. And that was really just sort of a narrative thing that happened, and it was, and it was really pretty fun. I thought it was handled nicely. It didn't take a lot of time. It was just quick, and then it was done, and that was a part of the character development. There are also a number of times throughout the show whenever 
Laura Bailey sort of forgets that she has the pet, or Jester forgets. I don't know if it's the character, I don't know if it's the player, probably a little combination of the both. And those end up being some pretty hilarious moments when she checks in, when she remembers. You hear? <laughs> And you look down as this waterlogged weasel is now like coughing and sneezing. Oh, no. oh, it's <laughs> it's awake and conscious. It's <laughs> you're just pushing on its chest. And has led to the ongoing joke that Sprinkle is not doing great. That Sprinkle is a little malnourished from time to time, or that Jester doesn't really know what weasels like to do and where they like to live. So, you guys, you guys hear this, hear this series of squeaks from above the house. There it goes. As you go up and check, and you watch as Jester is trying to force this weasel into the house that she worked so hard to make. You like it? I don't, I don't <laughs> you don't like it? <laughs> <laughs> so eventually, gets him inside of it. Do you like it, <laughs> And it, there's moments where Matt sort of gently reprimands, and even that's probably too strong of a word. But there are uh, there are repercussions for not knowing that ferrets, that weasels, can't just eat candy. And then he describes how. Sprinkle isn't looking great, or that Sprinkle is sort of this skittish, hardened, slightly aggro little thing that lives in her scarves and shirt and blouse and whatever, um, that, you know, doesn't really like other people. It's also led to a number of moments where probably that pet should not have survived. In fact, as of the most recent episode uh, in 20, no, 107, um, based off of what I've seen and checking with crit roll stats, um, Sprinkle should have died 10 times. She has a <laughs> ferret named Sprinkle that has survived against all fucking odds, Tyra. <laughs> How was he in the boiling water at yeah. the end? It was like refreshing, wasn't it? <laughs> That's the he's, cleanest he's been in weeks. It's though. true. He looks great. <laughs> How is Sprinkle? Sprinkle's doing great, right? <laughs> Has it moved in three days? You, you see from underneath the the shawl <laughs> that Jester wears, this like small skittering weasel head kind of slowly peers out. Please let it end. <laughs> and just withdraws back in. So good. Is, is he a revenant yet? I hope we lose. <laughs> He's gotta be. You don't know. He's gotta be. But they're handled sort of in character. It's a narrative thing. I also like that, you know, like Matt isn't being a jerk GM that's teaching his players a lesson by killing their pets. Don't do that. Like that's a that's a that's not cool to be like, oh, I'm gonna kill your dog in order to teach you a lesson as a player. What kind of, that's a bad GM, but there are these sort of gentle things that happen. Um, Sprinkle may or may not be a zombie revenant by this point. I kind of think that maybe he is, and that would be a really fun thing to reveal later. But overall, the most important part is that Sprinkle shows up. It's not every single episode, and it's always a lot of fun. It's a pet. They've established that Sprinkle likes to hide in Jester's cloak, and so it makes sense when we don't see Sprinkle for a little while. Jester remembers about Sprinkle from time to time, checks in, feeds it, maybe isn't the best pet care owner, uh, pet owner in the world. <laughs> I still don't know what Weasel eat. <laughs> but it's there, it's consistent, but not every single episode, and it's so much fun. And I love the sort of story arc and the camaraderie and the group jokes that have come from Sprinkle. So I love that little thing and I can't wait to see what happens with it and where it goes next. A big thanks to all of our patrons, especially to AJ. If you'd like to support our channel, then head over to our Patreon and check out the perks of being a patron. So what are some of your favorite stories of having players that have pets for their characters? They're not combat, they don't do stuff, they're just there for story and to be cute and to be fun like what we see with Sprinkle. What are some of your favorite moments that Sprinkle has gone through in the Critical Role show? I'd love to hear about some of those in the comments below. So until next time, I'm Ryan, and this is Roll for Initiative.
Bye. Speaking of pets. No. Why? I need to go to my room. You're filming. Okay. Come on. <laughs> Pause for pet.